Pam 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 pa da da. Da 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 da. Hello, hello, hello. We're just holding on and making sure that this all worked. So, stick around. Hope it's working. I'm checking in with the team just to see if it is uh, working. I see the chat. Da -da -na 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 Hello, Kamal. I will put that over here. All right, good. Da -na 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 -na. We got three minutes. Da -da. All right, guys, can we do an audio check? Let me know if you're hearing my audio in the chat. All right, sounds like the audio is working, and um, and I think the camera is all set. So we're almost ready to go. Um, sorry for the bulky headset, uh, but the studio is not completely uh, set up yet. Uh, but hopefully soon. You see, we got a camera set up here. Um, that's the marble carving area over there. There's some work with clay over here. Uh, got some stuff going on over here. Uh, we'll set up some cameras in the studio, be able to broadcast a, a little bit more often um, from this location, which would be uh, pretty sweet. So let's just give everybody a few minutes to check in. And um, awesome, Juan. Great. Glad to hear. Uh, I'm over here looking at chat. Uh, so if you see me look this way, it's, it's what I'm doing. Um, where are we calling in from? Austin, Texas here. Where are you guys? And there's a delay, so when I say this, it'll take a moment for it to percolate to you guys. Thanks, Earth. Appreciate that. Mayank in India. My brother-in-law's name is Mayank. 
Where in India? We have a house in um, Noida, Noida, which we have uh, not been to. So it took eight years to get developed. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, Rajasthan, I've been out there. Uh, Chile, Italy, Massimiliano. Hey there. Uh, here, let's move this so I can, I'm looking at that. Put that there. And there. Yeah, I think that'll work. All right, cool. Earth is from Earth. Fantastic. All right, so today what we're really talking about, let's make sure I have this available for you guys. There it is. Um, what we are looking at and, um, and focused on today is, what's this? I can close all that. Uh, is getting ourselves uh, in and learning about this new um, program, which I need the link for. Uh, and I closed Discord. Let's put it here so we don't have to see all my communications in Discord. All right, and we're just waiting for people to come in uh, to the class. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Thank you, Rebecca. All right, so um, what's really happening uh, is on Tuesday... I'm going to start my second uh, one-week class, and uh, I had a lot of fun with the first one, and um, it appeared to be quite successful. What we really are talking about is a foundational skill, right? Um, sculpting is one of those skills that informs your capacity everywhere else. Like, for example, with uh, my daughter and my son right now, uh, we have them in Russian School of Math, right, and uh, studying math, because it's a foundational skill for a lot of other things. Um, when you get into uh, the creative arts, you get into visual arts, sculpting is a foundational skill. It is something that um, makes your work better when you're dealing with imaginative work. If you're dealing with photography or visual effects, um, it's a little bit less important. But if you're dealing with anything like concept art, illustration, painting, drawing, any of that, sculpture is foundational. Um, I, I went to school at a place called Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. And um, one of the first uh, really big important teachers there was a guy named Thomas Aikens, who is uh, really a significant realist uh, in the history of, a, of American painting, kind of studying in France and coming in uh, back to the U.S., back to Philadelphia, and, and sharing what he had uh, learned, you know, studying with Jerome, you know, all these, like, um, just top-of-the-top top, uh, French artists. He, one of the first things he did was uh, implement sculpting alongside of painting and drawing. So all of his painting students also had to learn how to sculpt because it helps you understand the human form and helps you understand form itself, the language of form, in an entirely different um, way than drawing or painting ever could. And that's really what this is about. Like, um, what we noticed at Vertex was that um, there were some people that came in and they just took off, and there were some people that struggled for a while, and we looked for the common ingredient to find out what it is, and so now we're introducing these foundational programs to help people um, prepare themselves for futures in game arts. Um, sculpting there's a lot of stuff happening i mean uh i should show you guys here so i'm going to go into instagram there's a lot of things happening uh in the world of digital sculpting uh let's say for example let's just take a look at barbara barbara siegel right so here i'm going to switch over to my screen um i, I had the opportunity to meet uh barbara uh, and for like 30 seconds chat, um, sometimes these things will find themselves in ZBrush 
Now, Barbara is uh, on the older side, not necessarily looking to go learn, you know, how to use ZBrush. So she might hire digital sculptors to come in and help her replicate this in ZBrush and then mill this out into, look at that, into marble, right? There's another uh, sculptor, a guy named Barry X Ball. Uh, let me throw this off to the side and look for Barry. Uh, and he's out of New York doing some really cool stuff. Look at that, getting scans and whatnot from uh, out uh, east in Europe. And, you know, there's just a, I've been exploring this too. There's such a, uh, a, so many cool things that can be done. So, for example, this is my son with his, uh, with his marble version. So I made a marble version of him that's uh, supposed to be coming here to the States, or to uh, Austin pretty soon. It's in New York right now. You can see it here. That's the digital sculpt of it. And then we went through a process to go in and mill it out. Um, and then it has to be hand finished and worked. It, there's so much that can be done with digital sculpting um, today. And it's, it's kind of like all this was here, but it's now starting to hit everybody uh, that you can do more than just games and film. Um, when I first started out, uh, I spent a lot of time working with ILM, Ubisoft, um, EA, places like that. And uh, let's go ahead and turn that off. And, um, you know, that was that's a great career, but there are other options that are starting to open up now um, as well, which I think is quite uh, fascinating. Let me turn this down. There we go. So really, sculpting is a foundational skill, and we're here to learn how to sculpt. So the way this is going to work today is um, I'm going to just do the talk I did right there. Um, then I'm going to get into ZBrush, and I'm going to start talking to you about sculpting inside of ZBrush and how I like to think about it. Okay, because at the end of the day, that's what we're really talking about is um, is how you approach a tool. So we have a belief here at Vertex that mastery is not magic, it's process. Know the process that the masters use and you become the master. Like it's not rocket science. It's not magic. It's not midichlorians that, you know, have given you, you know, talent. It's not about being the one. It is about um, learning the processes and then putting the time in so that those become part of your biology. Uh, I talk in the course a little bit about learning, and um, and it's just important to know that when you are learning, uh, it is a biological phenomenon. You are building what they call myelin inside your brain, and you're, you're wrinkling your brain and you're building myelin. Um, myelin is insulation around your neural uh, your neurons, which increases the electrical output they can produce. Uh, that's what you're doing, and that's what you're going to do today. You learn something new, and if you repeat it over and over, you thicken that myelin, and you become more capable at that action. And so the one-week class is really built around these building blocks of things that get you from point A to point B um, and give you a system. So, for example, I'm going to ask a question here, and, and there's a delay like I mentioned earlier. But how many of you here, and in fact, let me say it this way. Tell me if you feel like you're um, in control or not in control of when a good sculpt happens. Do you feel like you have, like, just it's locked in solid? you feel like you can control that? There's some variance. You might have a bad day. Or do you really just not know when you know, you're going to have a good sculpt and, you know, you're just working, working, working. Which one of those two do you feel um, kind of helps summarize your direction and, and what you're experiencing? Uh, I think that might be an interesting thing for us to talk about. Um, Knight of Onions. Hey, Ryan, few of my coworkers have taken your courses and gotten a lot out of them. I can't imagine I can get work off in time to do it. Do you record the course? Can you only do pre-records? So we do record the course, but a big part of it is being in the course. Um, so it's not intended to be reviewed as a pre-record because we actually we get into Discord and you'll work on your 
project and share it in Discord. So on my screen, I'll have, you know, person one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'll have everybody's screen here so I can see, and I can just cycle through and say, hey, think about this, hey, think about that, and go back and forth while you're actually um, working, which is how, like, a, a real, like, a live class would work. If you were here working in the studio in clay, that's what would be happening, right? Um, okay. So do you feel like you have control or not control? And you may not want to say this. Um, I understand. So I just want you to put that into your brain. Because the, the one goal, if you're writing notes, this is the thing I'd say. The one goal that I have, it's not to make you a better sculptor, because what the hell is that? Um, it's not to, um, you know, teach you ZBrush, because whatever. There's lots of programs nowadays. The one goal I have for you is for you to be able to produce good results reliably. Because if you can produce good results reliably, then your confidence is going to go up. And just from that one foundation, you're going to find yourself just shooting forward. And there's going to be so much growth um, that can happen. Once you are able to get reliable results, and then you're like, well, I should fix this, and then you spend time, and you just keep moving the needle forward. But most people, when they sculpt and they start, they they don't have a process, and it gets really crazy. Um, and they'll try this, and they try that, and they think about this, and they think about that. Um, I'm going to teach you process, and, uh, and I'm going to do it right now. Um, uh, so Danny's saying, not usually in control. When I get a good sculpt, it can take weeks. Awesome. Uh, Mayank, uh, just work on it, work on it, work on it. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to get some We're gonna get some control here. All right? Mastery is not magic. It's process. Uh, if you learn the process, okay. then you will start to develop um, control and uh, predictability and confidence. All right. So... Um, I'm going to start sculpting right now, and I'm going to use uh, the uh, head. Okay, I like to use human heads because this is just the easiest way um, for us to kind of, you know, get some some results that we like. And and as you guys can tell from my Instagram, uh, it's it's something I love to do. So I'm going to just kind of crush through this and start to show you guys. Um, how you can start to approach uh, sculpting and getting you know reliable results. I should also, also mention, in case you guys don't know, um, you know, again, my my name is Ryan Kingsline. If I didn't say that in advance, I just started talking. Um, I helped build ZBrush uh, back in the day. Uh, worked with the ILM. Worked with a lot of companies to kind of work through features, and so. Uh, I know this program, you know, from the algorithms up. I have a, spent a lot of time here. I've worked with the primary developer a lot uh, to help this be a sculpting program. And you should know, you know, that ZBrush really is, um, for me anyways, the gold standard. So that's why I teach in it. It is not intended to be an easy tool, okay? Uh, I spoke to Ofer a lot on this. People complain the interface this, the interface that. And Ofer's comment, I think, is very, uh, it'll, it'll say a lot about what the few, next few weeks and whatnot hold for you. But ZBrush is not intended to be easy, okay? Because remember, it was doing something that nobody else could do. In fact, I think ILM tried to do it, and they said it was impossible to do with current technology. And then a month later, ZBrush um, was doing it, and they just about crapped their pants. So it was doing technically the impossible. It's not designed to be easy. And the way I want you to think about it is Ferrari versus Toyota. It's not designed to be a Toyota and accessible to everybody. Okay, It's a Ferrari. So when you sit down in it, you have to learn how to work with it a little bit so that you don't step on the accelerator and drop the transmission. Right? You have to learn how to work with it. And when you do learn how to work with it, it's a fine-tuned machine. And it can take you places. Um, that a Toyota never could, right? Nothing against Toyota. Um, but it's not a Ferrari. It's not, um, you know, designed 
to help you reach the heights of your creative, your imaginative potential. That's what ZBrush is wanting. It wants everybody to start to create at the speed of thought, so to speak. You know, reduce the barriers. I mean, think about this. I'm sculpting digitally, and it's in marble. It's going to be 3D printed. It can be put into clay. Like, I don't have to worry about all this stuff. I just digitally sculpt. How cool is that? All right, let's get in and, and talk about this. Let me see the questions real quick. Cool, Juan. Great. I'm just starting my journey into 3D. I tried some years ago and failed, so I enrolled this time to have a solid foundation. Awesome. Uh, Mayunk says, can you increase your microphone a bit? Uh, let's see. It is low, huh? Can you guys tell me real quick how is the microphone? I'm going to move it closer to my mouth. I thought I did testing on this, but I can see that the uh, register is a tiny bit low. And I don't know if I want to do too much adjustment. But there, I just increased it one. Let's do 1.5. All right, let me... No, that's too much. That's going to... It's already clipping. Okay, how's my audio now? Is it a little bit uh, too much? I don't see clipping. I've moved it closer and I increased it. The live saves automatically, my friend. Um, so that probably uh, will happen there. And remember, Vertex School, Digital Sculpting, One Week Intensive. So if you guys um, want to enroll or learn more about it, that's where you go. I just posted it in chat. All right. Now, let's get to work. So, the key thing that you have to understand Yeah, I heard the audio's gown. So one second, team. Okay. All right. So here we go. We're on camera. You've seen my screen and you're hearing my audio, audio. and now um, you should see both, and the audio should be back. All right, I apologize. When I created the scene in OBS, it uh, I forgot to do the audio. Uh, but I'll wait just a second to make sure that you guys hear me, and while I'm waiting, I'm going to do some small things. Da -da -da. Let me know when you can hear me in the split screen. da 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 Till then, I'm just here sculpting, sculpting. Okay, it's good now. All right. Now, a lot of people rush this stage. A lot of people. Um, I want you guys, when you're looking at this, I want you to be thinking about something called form concepts. In the master class, this is something I spent a lot of time um, talking about, this idea of form concepts. And so when I say, what's the form concept of an, a head? What's the general form of a head? You're probably going to say, like, you know, it could be an egg. It could be an oval. Sometimes you'll say, all right, so it's a circle and then it's a wedge, right, like that. And so... You know, this is one tried and true visualization of it. In my mind, I have a form concept that I am using. 
Okay, and this is the form concept I make almost every time when I start with a sphere from a side view. But even this is sometimes hard for people to do, and it's because one of the things that you might not notice, watch this chin, pay attention to the chin. Do you, do you notice how I pull that in and then I sharpen the chin? How did I sharpen the chin? If you don't sharpen that chin, you're going to be in trouble later on because you you know this is too vague. There's no defined point here. So how did I sharpen that? Okay, this is where in the very beginning, if you if you're not comfortable, you haven't done this a ton, then I highly recommend you pay attention to every tiny little thing I do. All right. So for example, I'm looking at this from a side view. Step one, pull. Have your have your cursor down near the bottom and not up here. You don't want that. You want it down at the bottom. And do you see how that circle rotates? Like now it's right there at the bottom. You don't want to do it here because if you do it there, you're going to have that problem. You want to have it really close to the bottom and pull it forward. Okay, And you see now it's, it's perfect. It's fine. Okay. That's it, right? Just pull that forward. And then I'm going to make a smaller brush. I'm using hotkeys here. I look at it from below a little bit, and I'm going to grab right here in the center and pull that forward. Do you see how that softens that chin? Because so I'm grabbing all of this and just moving it over. Small steps that make a difference. There, look at that. Nice hard chin. Get rid of that bump. You can just press Shift to. You want that facial plane to be there. There. Now, we also want to make sure that we are capturing not just the chin and the front of the face. We're also going to start to capture all of the work that's back there. And so this means that I have to understand what's happening back there. And um, so we know that the face, and in fact, this is an example. I think, uh, yeah, Andrew Cars did this a long time ago. He drew this dial and he drew, right? You see how the chin lines up right there? So he'd take this line and say, all right, that's the forehead, then that's going to be the back of the head. But what he would do is move this back to like about right there. So that line would move back, maybe even more. And then this would flatten out a little. And then a lot of times this area, is a, it's a point of confusion for people. What is it? Where do you do there, right? Well, it's actually, it's called the occipital. And if you were to go in and just make your head like that, you basically got rid of your brain stem, um, which means, in short order, uh, your character just died. So do your character a favor. Make sure that you include a nice round form that basically encompasses uh, what I would say would be half. You go... Half of that, and then half of that again, so one-fourth, that's occipital. Okay, and then from that occipital, then you can kind of, you can go in and um, trace yourself the jaw. Okay, and then remember, of course, you know, that the ear is going to be on the other side of that, about right like that. Cool. Does that make sense? Now, that's, that's the shape I'm going to make. So again, I'm going to pull form this way, and I'm going to start to subtract some form over here. Let's, uh, let's get about the business of doing that. So, And this is just the side view. So I'm going to pull that, and I'm going to just pull this in a little bit. Because it's not the full depth. And then uh, that's roughly half. I like to use masks because then I can just put on my screen. Yeah, there you go. And then we need half of that. There you go. I've been doing this, guys. Like this, 
This technique you saw here, I have taught like thousands. I've taught thousands this technique, this method. You'll you'll see other people like it's actually a standard um, way for people to build from a sphere now nowadays. Um, but this has been around 15 years. I've been teaching this. Now I'm using uh, my own brushes. Uh, and that's kind of an important thing for us to kind of uh, note. So I don't have them on ZBrush. Right now I put them on a thing called Sculpting School. So you can come here and you can just say Get My Brushes. I love this sculpt. It's like I don't often love my work. This one I love. But anyways, you can get your, you can get the brushes I've got there. So I've got, and uh, you'll see inside of my ZBrush, I've got a Kingsline Clay, Kingsline Rake, all that stuff. And I did have the um, fortune of actually building the rake brush that's in ZBrush, um, but I don't work there anymore. So I, you know, I just made my own again with the settings that I like uh, now. Um, this one's a little bit too rough. Uh, so you can get my version of it. And uh, now I'll come in. I can use the clay brush to pull some form like that. I can also uh, careful. Yeah, I can also just come in with the move brush and move that in. It's up to you how you want to do this. Um, but in the course. When we get in there, one of the first things that we do, which is, a, I think, a fantastic exercise, is we learn how to uh, square the cube, right? So I teach you guys, uh, you come in here and we grab this. Let's go ahead and make that a poly mesh. And I'm going to just say divide that once. Let's come back. And the question is, how do we turn this into a... into a cube. And there's many different ways uh, to do this, to square the cube. But being able to do this means you know you have achieved a level of control. Like just try this exercise. See if you yourself can square a cube relatively quickly and look and see what kind of problems you run into, right? I'm very loose. Like, you see how loose this is um, as I go in here and I sculpt. Uh, I love playing really loose uh, like this. Uh, it's not for everybody because you have to have really good mastery um, on form concepts, on the intellectual side. you got to have some emotional management. <laughs> As everything goes to hell in a handbasket, and you're like, it's going to come out, Ryan. You're going to, you don't suck. It's going to happen. So that's just the beginning of starting to square a cylinder or a circle. And then, you know, another exercise I like, we like to do is uh, you take a, um, a cylinder and square a cylinder. Uh, then we do the inverse. It's like we take this and we learn... How do you turn that back into a sphere? How do you get the curvature in a way that is close to what a sphere should be? Cross contour lines, a long form. You know, there's a lot that gets involved in that. But anyways, let's go back to our human head here. I'm also going to put another form in here. It's a little line. This line is an anatomical line. I think it's called the nuchal line. So there's a superior and an inferior nuchal line. So they do that. Cool. All right. Any questions? What do you, any questions about this? Hey, Titan, how you doing? Um, now let's go and look at this from a front view and you can see what a tragedy. Okay, but super easy. Just gonna move that in. 
and very importantly, select towards the back and move it up. What does that do? Starts to create the high point of the head higher up. Next thing you know, we have some anatomy. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, uh, let me show it to you guys this way, is I'm going to pay attention to the cranial area and the facial area. So right about, oh, what's going on, right? Let's go, let's go like that. Yeah, it's going to go about like that. And, you know, it's, it's really more like that. But this is what we would call the cranial, and this is the facial. The key thing to understand about um, the, the facial area is that uh, if you were to say, if we were to say have a face, uh, let me make sure you guys can see this. Yeah, let's go about like that. All right, there. The, um, the outside, that's going to be the cranial. The facial area usually is inside, right? And so you can see on my face, like, you know, there's face here, and then there's stuff on the side. You know, and it depends on the, I think this is an 18 millimeter lens and um, micro three fourths, four, three fourths, if I remember right. Uh, so you're actually, like, you're seeing a lot of per perspective distortion. My cheeks are quite taking up a lot of that room. But if you're looking at me from an 85 millimeter lens, you'd actually start to see the back of my head more. That's the, the facial area that we're talking about and having this area, the eyes would be in here, the nose, you know, you're going to have the mouth, and then this is all going to be cheek here, and then the ears off to the side, okay? That, there's a difference between those two um, areas, and so we need to make sure that within ZBrush, when we do this, we want there to be what we, um, in the old textbooks, they call the slope. The slope, it's its a term for boats, you know, and I love going through the anatomy books, um, the older ones, because you see how the uh, how language and culture influence the words, right? Like you'll find some seriously racist uh, anatomy books, like if you look at William Rimmer, a uh, product of his time, right? And uh, they used eugenics, which is tracking facial features and mapping that to actual like intelligence, emotional development, a whole bunch of really bad stuff. Um, but specifically, the concept that they use was slope, right? Because there was a lot more people were on boats a lot more back then. Uh, not so much now. And so slope refers to a boat. That's the slope. That's the prow. And so we want this to slope and we want it to, we want the slope of the face. You want to know what the slope of your face is, but I'm going to go ahead and just Move it in. You see how that backside is, you know, it's a little square. We'll worry about that later. But either way, the most important thing I want is I want to get that movement in. Okay. And I want to carry that down. So you can see, I don't know if you guys noticed, but you see that chin? See how, like, it's, it's like bulbous right there. So we want to take that slope. And then... Don't mess with this. Like, there's a little quadrant of the chin like that. That's pretty much a straight line. But the rest you can start to move in like this. There you go. Okay, and I'm going to just flatten that a little bit. There. Cool, right? You start to see that. Now, something really interesting is happening here. Let me go ahead and switch to just the screen. And uh, let's look at look at that chin. Do you see how he's got that masseter right there? Let's do this in red. He's got this side plane of his chin. Look at that slope, man. Woo. That's, um, what did the kids say? Is, uh, is that mewing? 
or is it Sigma? Look at my sculpts and they'll be like, uh, there's a thing with the kid's friends, like, your dad can sculpt a, a mewing face, right? <laughs> Hilarious what kids are doing nowadays. But anyways, look at that. This is what we want to be paying attention to and learning. This is the vocabulary of form. It's like, hey, look, the whole muzzle of the mouth is K is is in here. And then look at all this all this cheddar on the outside. And this is an extreme version, right? right. Um, so, you know, we go in and you can kind of see I'm, I'm starting to get it. I'm starting to get the brow and all that in and, and whatnot. So you can, you know, this is my goal is to go in and establish these forms. And I do all of this stuff really fast, really fast. Um, so if I was to sculpt this, this part of what I'm doing right now would literally be like, oh, I think a minute to two minutes. And that's all it would take. But I went really slow so that you guys have this recording and you can kind of go back through it and look and be like, this is what I need to do. So says Ryan. And um, the best exercise you can do, in my opinion, is uh, what, what they call deep practice. And so deep practice is this process of repetition. You would sculpt to this point, this point, right? This point, that point. It's on the other side. You're sculpting to that point, and you're trying to get here as much as you po I should go here now. You're trying to get here as much as you possibly can. Um, don't pass this point. If you're not, if your sculpt isn't looking like this, then you need to stop and start again. Stop, start again, stop, start again. Um, because uh, there's no sense going down the wrong road, right? Sometimes you can muscle through it, okay? But muscling through problems is an advanced feature, right? It's an advanced skill. In the beginning, when you're learning this, you really want to have this solid foundation where you're kind of learning, like, what is this basic primitive shape? And so this is what I consider to be an intermediary form. This is a foundational form that everything's built on. And so at this point, I this is almost marble. And now my job is to remove things. That's not exactly what happens. I actually, I cut and I add and I go back and forth. But you want this to be as close as possible to what the actual thing is going to be. Um, and not add a lot, you know. And so that's one of the foundational principles that I have in sculpting, which is, you know, you should at each stage get to a predictable result and you should have a sense of exactly what it is you know you're trying to do like this there's a, there's an enormous amount of information built into this piece over here enormous um the five volumes i don't know if you guys can see but i've got the volume of the cheek indicated i've got the forehead here this blocky nature of the forehead's already there i've got what bridgman called the upright cylinder of the middle of the face. Um, I have the triangle of the jaw. Like, there's a lot in here. Don't pass this quickly. Get yourself to this point and try to be able to get yourself to this in less than five minutes. If you can, then then it's working. Like, we're doing this right. Okay, but if, you, if it's not looking like this thing in, in five minutes, stop, start again, and look at your process and be like, all right, what steps did I make? Did I, you know, this is, this is a, down to a science. It's like it's every single time this is what I do. I will come in and make that like little wedge. Let me go ahead and sh turn it to the screen. And then jawline, and I do this all from the side view. And then I come right here, it's front view. And I start working that front view and getting the slope. And voila, this is my foundation. All right, let me stop for a second and check questions. Uh, 
Massimiliano is asking, will you teach how to sculpt a whole body? We're only going to do a head, my friend, um, because it's one week and we want to make sure that you understand the foundation of sculpting. The figure is, is like, it's a lot of heads. So we're going to focus on a head and we're going to focus on this level. Like, ultimately what I'm trying to do is develop mastery in you, right? And there's no reason for us to rush it. You know, by all means, sculpt figures, rush ahead. Uh, I rush ahead. Um, but I want you to have this strong foundation that you can always go back to. That's what our time together is really going to be about. Uh, Dai, do you have a pen? Yes, I'm using a Cintiq. Um, and uh, it's the biggest Cintiq and, uh, and a pen. Uh, Buchanator. Is Buchanator muscle any major part? So Buchanator should be right here. If I remember right. Masseter crosses here. So the buccinator in itself doesn't actually produce form that you necessarily need, if I remember right. Um, it it's it's an expression uh, more than any thing else. Yeah, it's right in there. The biggest, most important thing in that particular area, um, that area of the face, is not the buccinator. It's the um, there's a fat pad there. And that fat pad, uh, you see that fat pad in Kanye West, for example. It's just the, the cheeks get larger. Um, but I think it's called the buccal fat pad. And that that's form-producing, you know, massively form-producing. Buccinator, not so much. Sigma and beta. <laughs> uh, Bakani, you make this look so simple. Mastery is not magic, it's process. I have done these steps hundreds of times. Uh, Mayank, so does that mean we are going to be live every day for a week? Yes, sir. That's the process. We are in class. Like my time, it's California time. I think it's 10 or 9. It says it on the um, page, uh, what we're doing. Yeah, 9 a.m. Uh, California time to 4 p.m. So it's like it's six hours a day. That's the easiest way to think about it. Uh, Danny, what do you think about using smooth brush? Uh, I use it all the time. I use it all the time, but um, the sculptors you're referencing are correct. It does destroy form. Um, but, you know, so does using a sculpting brush. <laughs> you can lay form down and destroy that just as quick as anything else. You just have to know how to use your tools. Um, all right, so let's get ourselves back into uh, sculpting. I also need to go into draw, by the way, and, and make sure that my draw is at 50 or 85. I'm going to leave it at 50. Uh, a lot of people talk about this and, you know, do we do X, Y, and Z? Look, just put it at 50 and then get it out of ZBrush as quick as you can. That's it. You know, you just have to know that. All right. So now, once I have this canvas for me to work with. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go paint a Greek mask, basically. I'm going to come in here and just kind of put, oh, I saw this technique just today, actually. I thought it was really cool. There. Now, from this, you can do a lot of things, but I'm, I'm not going to do it this way. I, I love this technique, but I'll show you guys how I do it. Um, so ultimately, I'll come in with the uh, clay brush, and I cut across the center like this, and then I pull down to the chin. And the idea here at this point is that we're starting to create the facial plane. And then once we have that, we might round it a little bit. This is this what Bridgman calls the upright cylinder of the of the face. And we definitely want to check it, you know, see how we're doing. I'm gonna come in here and just pull that down a little bit. Yeah, let's do that. Then I'll come in 
and I always do this with the mask. Mask. This part is just better with the mask. You, and you have to do it this way. It's, there's no other real way to get that done. Pull that nose out. Now, I'm not going to just pull the nose out. When you do this, um, you also have to be thinking about um, how the planes are going to operate, right? So right now, if you were looking at the nose from the bottom, that's the nose. But we all know that's not a nose. Noses are like that. So I'm going to take this. Uh, let's just draw it this way. I'm going to take this line, and I'm going to move it in so that the nose has a nice angle to it. And then I'll clear this out, and I'll include, I'll in increase that a little bit. OK, and then the nose, I like to get a little lift in there. And I always put the nose too low, so I'm going to go a little higher. And this is one of the really important things to kind of um, think about as you're doing this. I had a teacher. He said he said something. And when he said it, I heard it like it was coming from outside of the building. It was really strange. Um, but it was I, would, I never forgot it. I knew I would never forget it. Uh, but he said, it's not important to not make mistakes. What's important is to know the mistakes that you make so that you can fix them. I was like, shit, what? That's like, that's, that's universal truth. And I relaxed. And I was like, oh, so I can suck and then fix it? Like, I don't have to be perfect? Wow. All right. That's my nose. Now, muzzle of the mouth. How are we doing on time? I got about an hour. Muzzle of the mouth. Yeah. Make sure that nose is pushed. The nostril needs to be pushed in, and you can also just follow that like that. That, that's process, folks. Let's go back. First, I cut out that Pac-Man shape. Boom. Then I put a little bit of that maxilla area. I put the nose in. Mu muzzle of the mouth. That's it, right? I'm not, I'm not like, you know, going crazy. I barely touched this form. Barely, right? I'm not touching anything up here because that's not what's relevant. I'm, I'm going to, but this is a stage. So you saw stage, stage, right? And so now we would come in, take this, and basically go, what's the next stage for me here, right? Deep practice, you know, this one stage where it's like, all right, let's 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 just get this basic canvas until I can do it in five minutes. Then let's get this face till I can do it in five minutes, right? And then just keep practicing that. You will grow so much. It is, um, it's crazy, actually. Uh, I've seen just insane growth uh, when people do that. So... I'm going to say stage one, stage two, stage three, and I don't have any magic ball crystal like, you know, I don't, I'm not, I don't know how this all turns out. Um, I don't know exactly what's going to, what's going to happen with the sculpt. All, all I know and all I want you guys to know is that you have a procedure. And if you have that procedure, that's a toolbox that you can use to get yourself into trouble. Right, because that's actually the good thing. You don't you don't want this to be like super easy all the time. I mean, wouldn't that be boring? I don't know. I I like to get myself in trouble and have problems, and then be like, all right, how do we how do we do something super cool here 
after this tragedy. And, uh, and I have a toolbox. So, I don't know how much time you guys have allotted um, for me today. Um, so, I'm going to go through uh, this sculpting the head, but like this, if I talk, it slows this down. I'm going to actually escalate this um, because it's something that we would talk about uh, more in the one week and the later ones. Uh, but I, I want to make sure that you have this where we're looking at this and we are um, really learning these foundational steps. If you can do this in 10 minutes, then the what you want in the rest of this is, is yours. Okay, but now in the next step, I'm going to speed up a little bit. I'm going to talk, uh, but I'm not going to go at the slower pace because I am I have to hit a bunch of things. The Before I get into it, though, the thing to think about is that a lot of sculpting is separating and drawing. I mean, it's drawing, 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 right? So let's get ourselves in, and I'm going to start drawing, although I draw with a really thick brush. That's a that's a that's a drawing mark I put in. I separate the cheek from the brow, and the goal is to be able to have that brow be totally separate. So then I pull another line where I separate the brow from the frontal eminence, and then I pull another line to separate the brow from the temporal muscle, temporalis. Right? And then I'm just going to pull this in, and I'm going to pull a line like this. This is to separate the frontal eminence, because the frontal eminence is kind of like that. It can be two pieces. I separate the this part of the brow from what's called the external angular process of the frontal bone. I'm going to now start to separate the cheek from the muzzle of the mouth and the cheek fat. This is a line I draw every time. And you can see how I'm carving in, 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 in like that. You see that? OK, and then I'm going to carve that down. There you go. And let's just, I'm going to put ears in real quick just for the heck of it. I'm using the alt brush. And move that back. In fact, this entire head, what's happening here? I keep hitting the wrong thing. Yeah, that's way too much. Let's talk. All right, now, uh, wow, now that I've totally screwed up that ear, I have to fix it. I should not have got myself into that. All right, we'll leave that. Boom. Okay, what next? Let's separate the zygomatic from the master a little bit. So make him a little, maybe it'll be a female. I'll make it a little emaciated. If I want to do a female, then I need to round the nose like that. And then I need to really lift it. And I'm going to have to, let's not do a female, because I'm going to lose all this structure that I really want you guys to see. Yeah, let's, let's leave it at that. OK. All right, now the mouth. Mouth, 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 mouth. How many of you have problems sculpting the mouth? It's one of the most process-dependent areas. Like you have to do stuff and not really, like, is that the right move? And it all works. But if you go in there and you ham-fisted try to, like, make the lips, ah, drive yourself nuts. 
Watch the process. Everything with me is process. Process is power. Notice how I don't make a small line. That would be a disaster. A big brush. Ugh, even bigger than that. Big brush. Why a big brush? Because it sets up the planes, which is what I need. I'm just kind of brushing along here a little bit. And now I can go in, now that I have the planes, I can go in with the damn standard brush, and I can actually start to draw some lines. Okay. See how fast that happened? Pretty fast, right? And now there's a reason why I'm looking at it way, 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 way back like that. Because from a distance, it, it works. Okay, you get up front and you're like, oh yeah, oh, problems. But I all often throw things um, back in space just so I can kind of see if it if I if it roughly works, um, and then I'll come and bring it in and be like, oh, okay, yeah, you gotta pull that a little bit, and um, oops, excuse me, and uh, let's. What the hell is going on here? And it would be super wise to save this. Uh, 0419241-01. Yeah. Whew. All right, let me check questions real quick. Summit, summit. Uh, are these series going to be recorded and available for later? Well, this is a live stream, so the live stream will be available later. Um, I won't disable it. Uh, it just shows up on my YouTube channel. Um, how far, Amir, how far is the digital sculpting to classical sculpting? I'm not quite sure what you mean by digital. So uh, I think what you might mean is how close it is to the practice of digital sculpting. And so it's a hard question to answer. But everything depends on your process. I keep mine very close. So you see the way I sculpt. I actually sculpt like this in clay too. Fire lily. Um, I've drawn noses uh, and modeled in Maya and the way you simplified the nose. Mind blowing. Awesome. Glad to hear. Uh, Lozeran's art. I lay the form in the way similar to your process, but while developing likeness, those foundations are lost somewhere and I need to rebuild them. Yeah, that's. It's a lot. It's hard. It is hard. Oh, no, no, no. Um, Asimiliano, how can I integrate drawing in the actual process of sculpting? Um, I, I hope I'm demoing it to some extent. You know, it's just you're using this brush. But here, if you mean the other type, like I'll come in with damn standard. And sometimes I will use damn standard to be like, all right, let's just go through... Give me a sense of this, and then I'll press Alt, and I'll I'll, uh, I'll press Alt and be like, all right, give me this. Okay, there you go. Now that starts to work, right? And then I'll also um, use the brush like that to kind of help me get some form. So hopefully that answers the question. And th and that's a, what I did is a viable uh, process. Uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do it a little different. I'm gonna use this thicker brush and I pull in my marionette line to separate the nodule from this side. And I'm gonna just I don't want them to have super thick lips. I'm gonna divide this one time. When I do the nose, I don't don't do nostrils. I do a planes. So I'm all I'm doing is a shelf. You see it's just it's a shelf and I want to make sure I don't destroy that center column too much. Use the move brush and just pull all that back a little bit. Okay. Alright, da 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 I'm pressing Alt a lot. Do, 
do 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 do. Okay, almost there. I'm lightly touching these areas to just kind of even out what I did. Building bridges. That's the glabella right there into the superciliary arch. Uh, before I move on, if you have that plane well established, you draw in the shadow. And now that nose really works. But I'm not doing a ton. I'm not overthinking. I don't sculpt the nostrils. That nostril is the pl oops is the plane. That's it. There's a lot you can do just with that. And you know, I'll finish it up with this little triangle. And then it's like, wow, you know, it all reads. Okay. So there's a lot that I did right in that area, okay, and, and and it went really fast. So this is something in the class we like. We do this slow, make sure that everybody can get each one of these steps and understand and look at it from this view and look at it from that view, right? Because right, if you look at it from this view, you can see there's some like there's a form that moves like this, and then there's the muscle of the mouth. So there's this offset on the side for the nodule and you know the buccinator and the buccal fat and all of that stuff um, as it goes back into space so the next thing is to come in here and figure out eyes right and so if you are um, in stylized art or whatnot a lot of times what people will do um, is they'll come in with a sphere like sometimes they do this in uh, traditional twos they just come in with a sphere so i'll come and say append a sphere I'm going to grab that sphere and turn um, the transparency on. And uh, let's just scale that down. Turn ghost off. OK, and then we can make this work. Right, move that up, the eyes a little bit there, right? We can make that um, work, but I'm going to show you the sculptor approach um, to doing that. Uh, I, you know, I'll, I'll leave this line, this uh, sphere in here, and then, you know, you might as well go into geometry and uh, say mirror and weld, so you get one on the other side as well. Um, so you can see now I have two, uh, but I don't, I don't need that, okay? Uh, so what I'm going to do now is just duplicate that. And so the next step would be for me to show you, like, how do I build the form for the eyes? And I don't think it's necessary, you know, for you to build form for the eyes all the time in the way that you think. Because a lot of people think, all right, well, let's go in and let's draw this. Right, and yeah, I mean, kind of works, right? It only works, though, because I built this form, which you might look at and be like, oh, it looks like he just left form there. No, not at all, sir. That is some planned stuff. I have a volume that's right there. It's a little loose, but that's and that's the volume that was intentional, and that volume is what we use to kind of build forth. So we're, we can use that, but and and once we have that, sorry, not but. Let me just work that volume a, a little bit more. Sorry, one sec. I love there's this line right here called the Malar line I like to talk a lot about. 
you can see like how much of this for me is building the area around the area I want to focus on. That's a big reoccurring theme with my teaching, which is, um, you know, a lot of the mistake people make when they is, is they just focus on an object. They they treat the face like there's just it's an object, but you know you have to learn the structure underneath. There we go. That's a little cleaner. All right, I'm liking that. And I always go out, always go out. All right, so here, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to add some, some fat. And that's, that's eyeball, like that's upper lid eye fat there. You can do some amazing stuff. Just, if you get that underlining form in there, Just that upper eyelid being there starts to really define what this is, right? You already can see the character. You don't even need to draw anything just yet, but I will. I'm going to put a little coil of clay down here at the bottom. Now, I always, I just, I always get nervous with the eyes. It's like, they too far apart, they not. And it's really hard in ZBrush to, to get this. That's one of the reasons why people put spheres there, is because it's so much easier to, to just get it placed. But I can always move it later. All right, so now, next thing I'm going to do, I'm not going to go in and, like, sculpt the hell out of that wrinkle and all of the upper eyelid i'm just going to put in like a little note it's an anatomical note for the caruncula and then push that back see how it already reads one of the key things that we learn um, and that i want you to learn is how little you have to do right when you sculpt it should rise up from from the foundation that you put if you're constantly laying the brick and tamping down and tamping down and doing this you know it's it's the process is wrong there's no other way to say it but if it rises up and you're like oh i just got a little tab there a little tab there like almost like impressionism then um, then you're doing it right. For my money, you're doing it right. Because you can always refine this and make this classical and close all of the form. You can always do that. Um, but uh, you... Um, when it rises up, I feel like my connection with it is stronger, if that makes sense. And that's what I really want to teach you guys like it's what i really want to communicate is uh it should flow and if it's not flowing why how do we get it to flow i mean wouldn't it be amazing if i was just sculpting and it's like oh it just all just happened and and i just felt amazing while doing it you know that would be that that would be that would be amazing And I, I think that's what we would want. You know? I think. Uh, it's what I like. So let me check the eyes. Can move them a little closer together. I kind of like them like this. 
I'll leave it there for now. Okay. Almost to my next stage. So we have ba bum, right? And hopefully they're all close. There, there's some changes I made, um, but hopefully they're all relatively close. And I can start to move things in. This looks like that guy in contact, Ellie's dad. Small moves, Ellie. Okay, I'm going to duplicate this. All right. Any questions? Anything that you've got going on? It, just put them in the chat. Uh, I'm going to go through the, the questions in chat right now, and then um, and then I'm going to go to the very last stage that I want to show you guys, um, which is the rake stage. So when we crawl the surface, but let me check the questions. Uh, Victor Hugo, I love your uh, I love your novels. By the way, I'm sure you hear that a lot. Sorry. He's one of my favorite writers. Uh, your process for the face really helped me understand modeling. Sweet. I'm so glad to hear that, Victor. Um, I know that might be a big ask considering this is the second one, but a big long shot. What was the question, though? Knight of Onions. I'm sorry. In this limited window, I'm, I don't actually know what the statement was. Um, oh, do you know when the third class will be? Got it. Uh, that, I don't know, because if I have my way, I move the family to Tuscany, um, for the summer, but they're a little resistant, so I don't know. Uh, a short noses model. Are you doing it from a concept? Uh, you do then, can you tell me how you match, I, this is from my head, it's from my noggin. Uh, Victor Hugo, from a, a horizontal perspective, how much does the inner eye corner goes down than the outer? This I don't know. I don't track that. But, you know, there is some movement. It does change, though. You know, you have to remember, it does change per ethnicity and things of that nature. Uh... Lazar, what is the use of learning écorché if we simply sculpt external forms, including muscle, fat, and skin? Um, écorché is what I consider advanced. Uh, I don't think it's important in the beginning stages, although some people, that's the direction they go. Um, I think écorché can lead you astray, and you just create these, like, muscled people. Um, but écorché is essential for you to reach the higher thresholds, because uh, you name muscles, um, and you place them, and you know, then it also opens up to imaginative capacity, right? So you can sculpt whatever you whatever you want, um, and you know there's a form going here or there. Thanks, Ned. Uh, rounding the planes of the face is the next stage, so stay with me for that. Um, how to differentiate from s the style and same face syndrome? I don't. That's a complicated question. Um, because I don't believe in style, like it's, it's for me, it's how you think. I don't think style is external. So I'm sorry, that that's a little tough to answer right now. Um, Browery and cheeks, how can you avoid? I mean, how can you? How can we avoid same safe? Earth, I did not understand that question. How to do? Oh, how to differentiate style and same? How to avoid same? I don't worry about that. I mean, number one, worry less, sculpt more, right? Like, if you find yourself worrying, then turn the computer on and sculpt. It, it's it's one of those things where you got to do it, right? Um, 
you can't yeah I mean you got to do it you just got to spend time doing it um, can you give advice to a trainee to train efficiently how much time a day do you need to pr I was talking to my daughter about this today the first thing I am be uh, that you need to be aware of and that I think you've done a great job here is you're aware that you have to practice you have to have a practice and you need to understand that practice as though it's something else you go to the gym you don't just go hit random machines you have a practice upper body today legs you know there's a practice and um, and so you just have to do what you can uh, you'll find that there's a um, a fatigue moment and don't push because you can burn out right uh, but I recommend students work two to three hours a day uh, and that's basically the fastest way you can grow is the more time you put in as long as you're not putting more in that you're going you're going nuts and burning out um, but I I tell students like three to four two to three hours four if you can just get into sculpting if you're in flow stay in flow keep sculpting if you start to exit flow you know chill Jojo, yeah, imagine resisting Tuscany. I know. 10 and 13 year olds. Whew. They don't have their, their brains not fully developed. I wonder what if you make same model in traditional way and digital. Uh, I'm technically doing that. The, um, the carving you see like uh, right there, that's marble. And you can see the 3D print right there. How many heads should you practice? Don't worry. Less less worry, more practice. You should do 26,372 heads, okay? 26,372. That's your magic number. And if you have seen the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, then we're going to be okay. In the end of class, you, can you tell me what pen do you use? I use a Cintiq. And you have to use a Cintiq. Uh, sorry, you have to use a Wacom or... Huron or something, but I use a I use a Wacom. All right, almost at the last phase. Uh, Cruz, do you recommend intermediate sculptor or amateur to take 30 days to study the skull or the arm or whatever every day make one skull? I think that's, I you know this is this gets to the question of practice, Cruz. Um, and the most important thing is that you have a practice and that you're thinking about the practice. Uh, and it's not random. So I think that that's a fine motto. Just uh, I wouldn't externalize it and be like, the Lord has told me to sculpt this one skull 30 days, and I will be a sinner if I don't do that. Like, don't externalize it. Um, do a skull every day, and then when your brain goes, oh, I'm going to die if I see another skull change right but resist a little bit it's good to push into that and be like all right just one more day of these damn skulls but you know don't torture yourself 26,372 that's the magic number okay 26,372 that's your magic number for sculpting all right, let's get to the last phase. I'm going to divide this up past 2 million. I have my rake brush, the King's Line rake brush. I always hated putting my name on things. It's like it always made me nervous. I'm not worthy. But there you go. And I, this is, we do two things here. We sculpt down the form, and we sculpt across the form. Down it, and across it. And you want to start to get comfortable with both those modalities.
I stopped talking. Sorry. This phase, like there's a lot more that goes in. It becomes hard to compute, to, to explain, because my brain is processing a lot of variables. Mentalis. And my blood sugar levels dropped, so I need to go eat. I starve myself before these things to keep myself sharp. And that does not work as much when you're 50. <laughs> when you're 50, it's like, ah, oh, man. OK. You see I'm crawling the surface? I'm going to really remove cheek fat. I'm going to really push this in. I want to see how far I can get this before it actually just starts to look creepy. This is me trying to get myself in trouble because, again, I get super bored. Let me really accentuate this. And he's got to have these like monstrous cheekbones where you're just like, Jesus, good lord. And you're like, yeah, dude was definitely into goth when he was younger. <laughs> All right, so I'm really going to just see, man. Yeah, there we go. All right. It's actually really I'm liking it. Okay. But what happened? And this is a really important thing you see I'm doing here. Um, this is a form concept I have. I put a little shape, and then the muzzle of the mouth and the nodule, like that's a bean that sits on top of that. It's hard, hard fought, hard learned knowledge. All yours for the taking for the simple price of a one week class. Join now. Supplies are limited. Mm -hmm. Cutting that form in there a little bit. That's a high point. Dives in right there. Yeah. Still not interesting to me yet, though. Still a little boring. No, I like the, um, I'm going to use a move brush. I need to find some interesting shapes or I just lose interest. There we go. What kind of juxtaposition could I do? Tiny chin. It's a little Timothy Chalamet. It's a little on the nose. Big lips. Yeah, big lips. I don't like big lips. I'm going to just move all that down. Make that nose a little bit less. Oh, this is a part that sometimes annoys me, but let's go ahead and undo all that. I'm in a class, so I don't get the free reign that I would. I'd sit here and spend, like, hours playing with those shapes to make them um, something that really connected with me. Like, I start to feel like a, a, an actual, like, spark. I'm like, yes. It's like a trail of breadcrumbs that gets laid out, and I'm like, yeah, there's something there I need. But in this case, you know, what I need to do is show you guys how I think visually and this is this is a pretty decent introduction to my thinking of it right so i'm going to leave the rounding a form 
um, the, the, the kind of this is the blending of it here. And then the final stage would be like, you know, how do I how do, how do I like not leave this like a sculpt, but actually start to finish it? You know, what do I need to do um, to make that happen? And, and that actually is all of that is is a lot quicker than you think. Um, and that'll conclude what we are doing today. So get your questions in quickly because uh, we're going to call it a day soon. Uh, let's get a little bit of eyebrow. I'm just running that across like that. That's pretty shitty, but let's go. Sorry, didn't mean to cuss. Uh, that's too simple. Let's go. Like that. There we go. Mostly what I'm trying to do when I create the eyebrow like that is a sh is shade. So I'm, I'm cr trying to create a shadow. There. That shadows, it means a lot. All right, let me check. Um, okay, all right. So I'm going to duplicate this. And now I'm going to take my rake brush. Five, okay. I go into alpha tile and I'm going to tile this to two. And I'm going to go into my brush depth and I'm going to set that to zero. Now, this is an even finer rake brush. So I'll press alt and watch how this just integrates form. And you know, you still have to be careful. Like we said, the smooth brush can destroy form. Um, this is a little bit better. It does take a moment or two. But I, I, I just feel like I have a lot of control with this. That form's not accurate. I need to move that back. In some cases, when you're working traditionally, this actually creates textures that you, you continue to use. Um, I think that's actually why I overbuilt the alpha tiles, because this, this is a great way to develop some skin. Uh, hold on, the nose is pretty shit. Uh, another swear word. All right, so now I can tell my son uh, I also sculpted Giga Chad. All right, so there you go. You see that guy? I crawled the surface to find something interesting, and then I just took that to the next level with using Alpha Tile. And once you've done this, then smoothing it 
becomes a little easier. And again, like I said, mentioned before, um, traditional sculptors will do this in clay, and then they they melt the clay, and then you get little bits of the of the skin that are left like that. And so that becomes quite useful for them. Okay, now, uh, let me undo that, sorry. Uh, that's actually another stage. Duplicate. All right, now I had line work. Line work and shadow. This is all like half tones. And so spend a little bit of time here, play with things. I don't feel good about that nose. I'm missing some primary shapes I should have told you guys about. But that's live. OK, let's leave it right at that. So you know, not too shabby um, for doing that in front of you guys and explaining myself as I go. Let's do a quick BPR. This is uh, Giga Greg. Giga Greg. All right. So, what did you learn? What was uh, something that you think is valuable that um, you think is going to help you in your career? I would love to know. Leave that in the chat if you don't mind, um, so I can kind of uh, see what really you guys connect with and what. Um, what you respond to and, and what you need, right? So uh, hopefully I'll do more of these. And um, and uh, I just want to know what you guys like. So, all right. Now, if you are uh, interested, then keep in mind the Digital Sculpting One Week Intensive. I'm going to post the link for you guys in the chat. Um, it starts Tuesday. Right, and I think there's a there's a discount if you get it today. Is that what it says up here? Yeah, the twelfth. Uh, oh, let's keep that centered up there. There we go. Uh, I would love to see you in the course and to help you improve your sculpting, and um, and you guys will help me as you're going through this. You're helping me write the book, so I hope to kickstart a book on sculpting, not just digital, but actual like the whole deal. Uh, and continue the legacy of Eduardo Lanteri, uh, who I think like his book is unmatched today. So I'm going to try to give him a run for his money. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed today. Again, tell me what's one thing that you learned or you found really interesting. And I'm going to stick around here for questions. So I'm just going to check the chat for questions. And I uh, hope you guys uh, have an amazing weekend. And I uh, hope for, uh, look forward to seeing you in the class. There. Talk to my talk to myself silly uh digital sculpting one week intensive six hours a day for five days it's gonna be pretty awesome all right let me take a look at uh questions uh gates are these live streams fun is there is it a better experience when you meet your students i actually do almost everything online so i love these but i like like in a zoom where you're actually you see somebody and you're like yes and this is what you need to grow and this is that's that's the that's the joy uh, how do you clean up properly after the rake brush? Hopefully I just showed you that. 
Zoom it, your approach is very clear and solid. I work as a professional many times. I get one image and I have to figure out the rest. Yes, yeah, a lot of, yeah. So this this will definitely help. Um, and I talk a nerd about sculpting. Uh, join our Discord. Uh, where do I find people like you um, and talk a nerd about sculpting? You can join our Discord. Uh, DM me on Instagram. I'm not the socialist, the most social person. Not the socialist. I'm not the most social person. <laughs> but DM me on Instagram. Uh, Danny, I enrolled in the course. Awesome. Uh, oh, yeah. The previous discount. Yeah. Okay. All right. I got it. An hour late is fine. Uh, assume it. Is there a better way? Uh, you are, your approach is very clear. Can this method work in this scenario, or is it a better way to approach this? The method Sumit that I used um, will help. Like you build all of the forms, and then you would just, if you have reference for one part, then you just, you know, adjust that area, and then you kind of build everything into it. Um, yeah, this this approach will work. Danny, is it? Uh, no, Danny, you're going to be fine doing that. IMB, how to be an artist. People around me work 8 to 5. I can't do it. I'm currently doing it 8 to 5. I feel ya, brother. That is hard. Um, and I wish I had a better answer, uh, you know, to it. But one of the things that they don't teach you in art school is, you know, how to be a business person. Because um, creatives are entrepreneurs. And you have to know that from the start. Right, you're an entrepreneur, and you have to find out how to get your revenue streams. And I, my life is actually um, kind of like a, a model for that. So I just wanted to sculpt, and so I built training programs, and I've been doing this like 15 years. And then eventually, I built the school. Like it took me a long time to build a school because it was very intimidating, and I didn't know if I wanted that much of my time to be taken up. Like I have a meeting with an accountant after this, and. Um, you know, that's the way it is. But uh, you have to start looking at that from an entrepreneurial perspective. How do you get revenue in? What can you build as a revenue stream? Um, my brother, Josh, he makes things and goes to conventions and sells, and he just broke six figures last year. And he just makes things and sells them in conventions. He gets by pretty good. Uh, Juan, I'm grateful for your presentation. Ready to start next week. Awesome. Gates is in the Discord. Uh, can I DM one of my sculpts? Sure, go for it. Um, Mayank, I'm doing jewelry designing. That high level of sculpting useful for me? Uh, high level of sculpting. That depends on what you're doing. So jewelry designing is a big world, right? Because you can be doing rhino to grasshopper. Or he could be doing what Thomas Witzelbach does, um, which is uh, the the you know the just heavy sculpted, beautiful ornamentation. And so if you're just doing rhino and grasshopper, like I mean, you probably already know you don't need to sculpt that stuff. And it's actually hard to combine sculpting with that rhino procedural grasshopper approach. Uh, but if you're doing Thomas Witzelbach and you're sculpting. Yes, this is about getting control over your sculpting. Um, and that's that's this is why in the beginning I said this is a foundational course because I believe digital sculpting is foundational to game arts. And um, and so, you know, we're bringing I haven't taught this in like five plus years. Uh, I kind of um, wanted to focus on the stuff that gets people, you know, actually translates into the, the job at a game studio. And now we're seeing this is actually, like, this is one of the things we miss. Like, you need this. And then you build game arts on top of that. And then you go, and the chances of getting a job increase uh, dramatically. So. All right. Okay, any other questions, team? Just leave it in the chat. I'll check again a little later today, and I can answer and reply to anything um, in this on YouTube. Uh, thank you for being here, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the uh, one-week full-time intensive. That would be awesome. So take care of yourself. See ya.